This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's up? This is John from John Bits for Photography, and today I wanna to share five tips for reception lighting. Starting out with the first tip, you don't have to use off-camera flash. Now I'm sure everywhere you've seen and heard, everyone acts like you absolutely have to 100% use off-camera flash to shoot a reception, but that is not 100% true. I shoot honestly 90%, more like 98% of my weddings without using off-camera flash. And personally for me, I don't like the look of off-camera flash at receptions because you always see a big light stand in the background with a rando flash on the back. I just don't like the way it looks. Generally at my receptions, I'm using a speed light on my camera with a MagMod MagSphere on the top. With the way I shoot, especially using wider focal lengths, this works perfectly and always gives me the lighting I need. However, as a big disclaimer, make sure you still understand off-camera flash so that when you need it, you can use it. Because again, like I said, 98% of my weddings. That other 2%, yes, if I need off-camera flash, I will use it. But don't think that you absolutely have to have off-camera flash to shoot a reception. Again, here are my results not using off-camera flash. Next up, don't be afraid to raise your ISO. Generally, when I get to a reception, I break out my flashes and I start setting up my camera, my ISO is gonna be somewhere between 800 and 1000. Again, your ISO can range depending on your camera, so you should know your camera and its limits, but that 800 to 1000 range is good for me to get enough light in as well as not have too much grain in my photos. Keep in mind, at a reception, it's usually not gonna be totally pitch black. There's gonna be candles, maybe some up lighting on the side or something. So there is gonna be natural light in the room. While it is dim, there is light there. And usually I raise my ISO so I can capture the light in the back of the room, but then also use the flash to fill in my subjects, which are gonna be closer to me. Now again, you should still be using a flash, so don't think you can just raise your ISO and take your photos, but raising your ISO basically helps you capture the ambiance of the room and then the flash will light your subjects. Next up, make sure to use on-camera flashes that also work as triggers for off-camera flashes. So again, I generally don't use off-camera flash. However, because of the flashes that I do use, if I do need to do some off-camera flash, I don't have to change my setup too much. So I use the Godox V862 which they make this flash for every camera system. This flash is absolutely amazing because it also acts as a trigger. It can trigger other V862s, so I could take my second flash and put it on a stand and trigger it from the flash that I already have on my camera. Or I could also set up some strobes on the corner of the room and have my flash on my camera also trigger those as well. So basically Godox V862s on my camera and then Godox 8200s off camera. And speaking of off-camera flash, using Godox 8200s, if you want to see this in action and an actual behind the scenes, make sure to check out Reggie B Photo's video on this, which I'll link up above and also in the description. The next tip is huge, and honestly, I never use a flash without them. Make sure to use the MagMod modifiers. MagMod hands down makes some of the best flash modifiers. I absolutely love their products and use them for basically everything, even the extra light I have lighting me right now. The product I mainly use is the Mag Sphere. It's easy to put on my flash, it's light and simple to carry with me, and it usually gives me all the light I need no matter what type of reception I'm dealing with. If the ceilings are too high, the Mag Sphere still is great. Keep in mind, however, with the way that I shoot receptions and using the mag sphere, you do need to be shooting wide and fairly close to your subjects. Now, if you're shooting longer, you may wanna look into the mag bounce. Basically, it's kinda like the mag sphere, except it's like a scoop, so it's gonna throw the flash out further. Generally, I'm not shooting that long. This is if you're shooting 85 mil or longer, but basically, you wanna get this mag bounce to help out with that. Also, if you're using soft boxes, which again, I'm using one right now for video, they also make a soft box and they just upgraded all their soft boxes. They have a nice larger one now, which I really am looking to check out, but hands down, mag mod stuff is what you need for your flashes. I basically use them at every single wedding and there's no other way that I shoot flash without them. 
And last but not least, Bounce Flash is your friend. You should always be bouncing your flash unless you can't for some reason, but Bounce Flash is the easiest way to get used to doing flash photography. The easiest place you're gonna be able to do this at a wedding is if you have a wedding in a white tent. Generally, the tents aren't too tall and everything is white, so it's easy to bounce the flash. Basically, when you set up the flash on your camera, make sure you point it kind of up and back over your head. This way, the flash will flash up and hit the ceiling, and since it's white, it's basically like a giant softbox, making your flash larger and giving you a great look on your photos. Here are a couple of examples of white tent weddings I've done, which are hands down the easiest flash photography setups. The great thing as well, with the MagSphere, you can also do bounce flash. So when I'm using the MagSphere, I basically just point my speed light straight up, put the MagSphere on it, which is gonna throw my flash around me, but also it'll still go up and bounce off the ceiling. And again, the only places where you're not really gonna be able to bounce the flash is if the ceiling is a different color. If it's a little dark, it's usually fine, but if it's black, obviously you're not gonna get much bounce off of that. But the Max Sphere, again, will help you out, giving you a bounce off the sphere itself so you still get the flash thrown around your general area. Let's not forget to take a moment to talk about this video's sponsor, Squarespace. As a photographer, having an online presence is extremely important, a place to show off all of your work and make sure you're getting clients in the door. And Squarespace is great for this. It's an online platform that will help you build your website quickly and easily and show off your photos to the world. They have templates specifically for photographers, which will make it easy for you to set up a website. So if you don't have one, you definitely should look into some of their photography templates and throw your portfolio up there right now. On top of just making your website, they also have a lot of ways that you can manage your website as well. You can put up blog posts, which is a great way to show off some of your past weddings. You have analytics to see who's visiting your website and from where. And you also have commerce if you have any merch or anything you wanna sell, like prints directly on your website. Make sure to check out the link in the description below for 10% off of your first website or domain. So I hope those five reception lighting tips were helpful. If there are any other tips you have for someone starting, please throw them in the comments below so that we can all learn together. Again, don't forget to check out Reggie B Photo's video on off-camera flash. It is a really awesome video. Honestly, whenever I need some help with off-camera flash, I usually reference that video. And make sure to check out MagMod. Honestly, I'm trying to get sponsored by them. So if y'all wanna go tweet at them and be like, yo, JBiv is awesome. Hit him up with some of that new MagMod stuff so he can review it. You know, just give them a little, a little nudge. <laughs> Thank you again for hanging out on the channel. I hope this information was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe for more wedding photography and I will catch you all next time. All right, peace.